welcome back to rehabbing. I want to make one clarification. I had a question at the break about uh, when I said uh, about traveling to uh, the site. I know that Steve talks about the idea that you don't have to travel uh, to the place that you're buying the real estate in. That's correct. You don't have to. I said if you have the time and the money and you can get there, you know, that's a choice for you. So that is true. I'm not, I'm not telling you you have to go there. You can certainly buy real estate without seeing it. But if you have the time and the budget, okay, that would be a choice of yours. So I want to continue with this. We've ended talking about um, money makers that really help that really help stay organized, John. This is a part of the program that I wasn't expecting for you guys to see my little purse with all of my electronic wiring in it. But uh, that's, it's not a man purse, Pierre. It's just a purse. Anyway, has all my tools of the trade up here. Oh, Pierre. After what you were wearing this morning, let's call a spade a spade. Anyway, so I want to I want to continue with this list. We went over money makers that sizzle, and, and again, the point I was trying to make with these things is these are inexpensive items to really um, increase the value significantly. Very inexpensive, easy to do. Okay. Um, now I want to talk about what is going to pay the bills. If you're going to do rehabbing on a place, I want to kind of note and highlight what is going to pay the bills here. 10 places to focus, paint, carpet or flooring, counters, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures. That's the first five. If you're going to rehab a house, I would really put some money into these areas because this is what's really going to drive value. The second five, does everybody have those down? No? The second five, am I in your way? I'm probably in your way. That's all right. The second five should also be a focus towards you. If you're working, by the way, with a subcontractor or somebody that's doing a lot of this work and you're in Canada, make sure when they're picking out these items, and I'm going to show you an example of it in a moment, if they're going to Home Depot, put your phone on FaceTime or make sure they Skype you when they're at the store or at least very, the very least take a picture and text it to you on some of the things that they're looking at. And I'll show you example, an example of that in a moment. Everybody got these now? Okay, so the second five are doors, windows, AC, especially in an area like this where it gets very, very hot in the summertime, cabinets, and tubs. Now, that's not to say that you should ignore the roof or ignore some of the other mechanicals like the furnace. These are just some of the areas that I think will pay the bills when you're looking at doing a rehab. And I just also want to focus in on a couple of other things. Not only do these two things, doors and windows, serve as for an aesthetic purpose, but they also serve as an efficient purpose. Because when buyers coming in, or renters for that matter, are coming into a house and you have double pane windows as opposed to single pane windows, that, that house is going to be more energy efficient. And if you've done the work on, I'm sure the windows look great from an aesthetic point of view, but if you're selling the house or even renting the house out, one of the things that I'm going to point out to the prospective renter that walks in the house is, by the way, we also have double pane windows here. Uh, by having double pane windows, your utility bills will be lower. Okay, you may want to uh, do that. Remember, renters are also going to be focused in on um, money saving ideas. And if it's a choice between your house and another house that is not energy efficient or only has single pane windows, that could make the very difference. Questions on that? Okay, so let's uh, continue here. Six items I think you should always do in a rehab. Six items you should always do. Number one, landscape. I think landscaping has a way of not only bringing an aesthetic look to a house, but here in an area like Phoenix where you're in the desert, it's a very uh, nice way of softening the look of a house. So I'm not saying you have to get the cactus look out here, but you can bring in some plants that 
would give the uh, house more of a softer look. And I think you can do a lot of things with color and uh, uh, some other things. So you, you definitely look at landscaping. It also brings a nice, neat, tidy look to the front of the house as well and the back of the house. Clean. You would not, uh, you'd be surprised at how many houses that you walk in, and you probably saw some yesterday, that were for sale but weren't as tidy as they should be. Um, it just makes you wonder, you know, what's going on there. You know, they know they're marketing that house, and it may be a nice house. I think in the one of the houses that we saw yesterday, if you remove all the stuff out of there, the value goes up by five or ten grand. Just taking the stuff out of there, right? Same thing. Make sure the house is free of clutter. Make sure it's clean, uh, and I think that goes a long way. That also goes when you're doing a rehab and you're going to make it a rental. If you do the rehab, along the way, make sure you're keeping the place clean, not only for an aesthetic point of view, for also safety, okay? The front door, I said this before, the front door is the first impression of the person buying the house or the person renting the house. Very, very important. That's the first focus of the thing they look at when they get out of the car. It drives me crazy when um, you have a house for sale or for rent and the house is the same color as the front door. Have you ever seen a house, a house like that? Make sure that if you're going to sell the house or rent the house out, maybe think about painting that door uh, a color that complements the house but stands out a little bit. It's the first impression. Painting does a lot because when you paint it, you can kind of cover over the dirt, so to speak. Okay, it gives it a fresh look. You would not believe what paint does, not only for a door, but for window sills, walls, and the house as a whole thing, and the exterior of the house as well. Okay, so definitely focus on the front door because it's the, the um, focal point. First impressions are important. Cute factor. Put this up here because I know a lot of you think that I'm cute. I agree with you. Okay, that didn't go over too well. <laughs> Maybe because Heather, I don't know, Heather's sitting back there. But a cute factor. I want you to realize that selling even to a renter, they rent on emotion. I put cute up there, maybe that's not the most correct word, but I want you to create something that changes emotion of the person that's gonna buy it or the person that's gonna sell it. In our presentations earlier, we had somebody uh, ask me the question, John, can you envision yourself in this house? John, can you see yourself in this house? Uh, I don't know what group that was, maybe group 12? Well, yeah, I, I don't know, was it three? Anyway, but I like that question. If you're selling something, be it a house that you're renting or a house that you're selling, I like that question. Could you see yourself on the back patio here, sitting, having a drink after work or a cigar or whatever that you think that they're, a glass of milk, I don't know, um, whatever you think they're in there. Or, can you envision your kids running around the backyard? It's all fenced. You could have a dog back there. When you're walking through the unit or your agent is walking through the unit, make sure your agent is highlighting those areas. Uh, the cute factor, so to speak. I really believe every house has a best asset. You probably saw the best asset of every house that we walked in yesterday. Maybe it wasn't as noticeable. If it wasn't noticeable, you need to highlight that yourself. Like, for instance, um, in uh, Tolson, when we were out there, the backyard of that place was huge. And it was an all-fenced-in backyard. That might have been one of the best assets. So immediately, if I'm showing that place to someone that's buying it, or if I'm showing it to a renter, I may not walk in the front door. All those houses looked pretty neat, but if you've got yours done and it looks great, I may instead of walking in the front door, I might walk immediately to the backyard. If that's the best asset, show that first. Show that first. Remember, first impressions are important. The garage door. They also want to see where they're going to park their car if they don't have a carport, if there is a garage. And one of the things that I think people kind of neglect is the garage door. Not only in the color of the garage door, but a lot of times there'll be dents in it and you know there'll be marks on it. Make sure that you're looking at a clean garage door, maybe painted a certain color,
But if you want a way to kind of spruce up a garage door, um, the squares, you, you'll notice a garage has smaller squares on it. A lot of times you can cut out those squares and put in a window. Now, if you're in an area where you don't want people looking into your garage or you have that issue, obviously you're going to have to deal with that. But in a quote unquote area where you don't have that, that as a concern, you may want to think about putting those little window inserts in there. Number one, it brings character to the garage door on the outside. It lights, lets light in from the inside to the inside. And if you're inside there and you want to see who's pulling up in your driveway, you can look out the little window of the garage door. Okay, so something to think about there. Now, the eight foot rule, when you walk in the house, the first steps in the house, look at eight feet around you. A lot of times where I see an issue with houses that are redone is that they clutter stuff that's right as soon as you walk in the door. They'll have a table there with mail and news and boxes and that's where they hang all the coats. And when you walk into that room, look eight feet around you. Make sure that there's a lot of space because you don't want the feeling of being cramped as soon as you walk into a room. Not only the front door, but maybe any room. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Questions with that at all? No? None? Are you questioned out? Okay. I haven't answered all of your questions, right? You're going to have some more for me, correct? Okay. All right. Thank you.